Today, we're diving into the latest and most exciting updates from SpaceX and beyond. From unconventional starship tests to groundbreaking asteroid discoveries, this episode is packed with thrilling news. Ready to explore the cosmos? First up, let's talk about SpaceX's Starship Booster 14.1, which is undergoing some very unique testing. Believe it or not, it's being slapped. Yes, you heard that right. But why would SpaceX use such a bizarre method? At the build site, the SpaceX teams are busy upgrading Ship 30's stainless steel hull. They're adding a new ablative layer to the heat tiles, but not around the nose cone. Why skip this crucial part? It's likely due to the cryogenic liquid oxygen on the other side, providing natural cooling. A risky move, but SpaceX is confident in their approach. Let's delve a bit deeper into this fascinating process. The ablative layer being added to the Starship's heat tiles is crucial for protecting the spacecraft during re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The nose cone, however, is an exception. Instead of the ablative material, SpaceX relies on the cryogenic liquid oxygen stored just behind the steel. This area acts as a natural cooling system, which is both innovative and risky. The challenge lies in ensuring that the propellant intended for the landing phase doesn't evaporate prematurely and vent out, potentially causing issues during the mission. It's a fine balance that SpaceX engineers are carefully managing, showcasing their confidence and expertise in spacecraft design. Moving over to Sanchez, we've spotted new pedestals identical to those under the current tower pieces. Are these for new tower segments that SpaceX is planning to build? It's a mystery that keeps us on the edge of our seats. The tower segments are essential for the integration and launch process of the Starship. Currently, seven out of nine existing segments are located at the site, each undergoing simultaneous work. The recent addition of cryopipes, similar to those on the tower base, is a significant step forward. These pipes are crucial for handling the cryogenic propellants needed for the Starship's launches. But what truly grabs our attention are the new pedestals at Sanchez. At first glance, these seem to be for the two missing tower segments that are in the process of being transported from Florida. However, these segments already have their own pedestals, leading to speculation about the purpose of the new ones. Could SpaceX be planning to build another segment for an even taller tower, as hinted by Elon Musk? Or are these just extra feet that will soon be scrapped? The anticipation and mystery add an exciting layer to SpaceX's ever-evolving plans. And big news, the vertical tank farm is finally gone. SpaceX wasted no time removing the final GSE tank, signaling the end of an era. The removal of the vertical tank farm marks a significant shift in SpaceX's strategy. In just two days, the last GSE tank was lifted and moved next to Highway 4, where crews quickly began cutting it into pieces. This rapid progress indicates SpaceX's determination to streamline and upgrade their infrastructure. But don't worry, we're seeing significant additions to the tank farm, promising exciting developments ahead. The new tank farm will feature larger, more efficient tanks designed to support future Starship launches. These new tanks are so massive that their transportation requires temporary road closures, highlighting the scale and ambition of SpaceX's expansion plans. Back to Booster 14.1, why is SpaceX slapping it? This unconventional test ensures the chopsticks and boosters can withstand the forces of a catch. Treating the booster like a punching bag allows SpaceX to test and train the Mechazilla arms, finding the right speed to avoid damage. It's all about precision and safety for future missions. Let's break down this unusual test. The idea of slapping a booster might sound odd, but it's a practical way to simulate the forces and stresses the booster will encounter during an actual catch. 
SpaceX uses these tests to fine-tune the programming and movements of the Mechazilla arms, ensuring they can handle the booster safely and efficiently. The slaps mimic the impact forces, helping engineers determine the optimal speed and force for the arms. Full arm catch tests with rails lifting and pushing against the booster's pins were also performed. These tests ensure everything can withstand an actual landing, training Mechazilla to handle real-world conditions. The rails act as inertial dampeners, absorbing and distributing the impact forces to prevent damage to both the booster and the arms. The successful completion of these tests brings SpaceX one step closer to perfecting their ambitious catch and reuse strategy for Starship. Moving to the International Space Station, recent issues have raised concerns. A water leak from an EVA spacesuit before a spacewalk is just one of many age-related problems the ISS faces. NASA plans to replace the ISS by 2030, but what happens to the old station? A fiery re-entry seems likely, with SpaceX providing the de-orbit vehicle. Could a starship be involved? We'll have to wait and see. The ISS has been a symbol of international cooperation and scientific advancement for decades. However, its age is becoming increasingly apparent. The recent water leak incident is a stark reminder of the wear and tear the station has endured over the years. NASA's plan to de-orbit the ISS by 2030 involves a carefully orchestrated re-entry to ensure the debris falls safely into the ocean. SpaceX's involvement in providing the de-orbit vehicle is a testament to their growing role in space operations. The possibility of using a starship for this mission adds an exciting dimension. Imagine the potential for SpaceX to not only de-orbit the ISS, but also salvage key modules and components for future use. It's a fascinating concept that aligns with SpaceX's vision of sustainable space exploration. Now let's talk about an incredible discovery from NASA's Osiris Rex mission. They found significant amounts of magnesium sodium phosphates in samples from the 4.6 billion year old asteroid Bennu. This suggests Bennu might have been part of a watery world. These compounds are crucial building blocks for life, bringing us one step closer to understanding the early solar system and the origins of life on Earth. The OSIRIS-REx mission has been a resounding success for NASA. The spacecraft's delicate maneuver to collect samples from Bennu's surface, often referred to as a boop, exceeded expectations by gathering over 120 grams of material, double the mission's goal. These samples have been back on Earth for a while, and researchers are finally unlocking the secrets they hold. The discovery of magnesium sodium phosphates is particularly exciting. These compounds are indicators of a watery past, suggesting that Bennu might have once been part of a larger body with liquid water. This finding has profound implications for our understanding of the early solar system. If water was present on Bennu, it's possible that similar conditions existed on other bodies, increasing the chances of life or prebiotic chemistry in the ancient solar system. China has also made history with the Chang'e 6 mission retrieving samples from the lunar far side. This significant achievement marks them as the first nation to do so, highlighting the global effort in space exploration. The successful touchdown of the samples in Mongolia and their subsequent recovery is a testament to China's growing capabilities in space technology. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash subscribe for more jaw-dropping space updates, and join us as we embark on a cosmic journey like never before.